Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Kurt Hansen, and beha on behalf of Jennifer Lane and Brad Hill and myself, we'd like to welcome you to the 13th Annual Rain Summit West. So thanks for coming, up, coming early, and give yourself a round for being the aggressive early morning innovators that you are. We're uh, really ha always happy to return to Vegas for this event and celebrate how much it has changed over the years. Uh, as has the online audio landscape. So we'd like to think that between rain news and the sets, we, we're helping play a role in that, and we're really glad to have you here. Jennifer? We have an excellent lineup of speakers, panels, and presentations for, for you today. I think you're going to really enjoy them. Um, Jason Calacanis is our keynote speaker. Um, his name is synonymous with digital media entrepreneurship, and we're thrilled that he's going to pr be presenting his update on the state of media, encouraging us all to think about the entire media landscape, digital media landscape, rather than just online audio, and think about how our small part of that um, fits into the bigger picture. We'd especially like to thank our sponsors. It's, of course, with their support that we're able to continue to offer these events. Our key sponsors today are Dot .fm, Radionomy, and Triton Digital, and there are many more, and we'll be telling you about them throughout the day, so thanks to all our sponsors. Um, we hope that you enjoy the day, and don't forget that we have a great cocktail party on the pool deck. I just checked the weather, and it's going to be 74 degrees at 5.30 this afternoon and sunny, so that sounds perfect to me, um, and I can't wait uh, to talk with you all throughout the day. Kurt and Brad and I are going to be trying to meet every, everybody, so uh, help us out. Come over and say hello. Our first panel is, as more and more local ad dollars are shifting toward digital, it's important uh, we to have a solid strategy for capturing local online revenues. Um, our first panel is going to examine the tools and techniques for growing local digital ad dollars. And come on up, uh, here to moderate the panel is, um, and introduce the panelists, is the Managing Director of BIA Kelsey, Rick Ducey. All right. Kurt, thank you so much. Um, what a great, great program you put together. So congratulations again to Kurt, to Jennifer, and to Brad. Really nice job putting this all together. Um, and so let me invite my panelists up. Um, the first session we're going to kick off with is uh, LOL, exclamation point, local dollars are serious business. And our focus is going to be the shift in revenue allocation across different media into digital media. So we're going to look at some uh, revenue trends. I'll share some forecast numbers. Um, we do surveys of consumers and of uh, small and medium businesses. I'll share some of those data. But then how can you actually engage? How can you actually go after some of those dollars? And that's what we'll hear about from the rest of the panelists. Um, so we're going to keep this fairly tight. We're going to do um, a series of presentations, and then we'll um, have the session then move into discussion. Um, uh, I'll ask some questions. We'll, we'll see what kind of comments we have back and forth. And uh, if you have questions in the audience, we'll do our best to accommodate those as well. So first we have Tim Clark. He is the director um, of digital audience at Cox Media Group. And uh, Tim, I just learned, uh, has come from a uh, pure play experience. When he was 15 or 16, he was in the internet business running pirate radio. Uh, and that's where he first uh, learned about rain. So that was about two years ago or something. Uh. <laughs> Anyway, so yes. uh, exactly. Very good, very good deep voice. Yeah, so, um, so Tim's going to talk about his experience. He oversees digital strategy for all of Cox Media Group's stations, and that role also involves serving as a liaison between the radio and digital TV divisions. From, from speaking with Tim, um, the focus there is really to give digital its own identity, and, and that's kind of both this challenge and opportunity. And, coming from his days running an internet pirate radio station of sorts and now being able to play with the assets of one of the biggest um, radio and media companies generally is, is um, very interesting and, and Tim will, will share some um, insights and data about that. <clears throat> and then um, next up um, we'll have Martin uh, Christie Setter who is Vice President of Mobile Solutions for Marketron. Um, <clears throat> he's going to go through some case studies for what uh, Marketron has been doing with some brands executing in local with that mobile channel that's so exciting and showing such high growth. Uh, there'll be a range of different things he's going to talk about, but I think Martin will um, focus in on a couple of things. Rather than being overwhelming, let's talk about some things that, that really work and, and are kind of proximate to, to radio sales teams. Uh, Bill Frund will be up um, after Martin. Bill is the Executive Vice President, Chief Revenue Officer for Clip Interactive, kind of a um, 
new positioning between what radio does so well and sort of that loudspeaker uh, megaphone mode, but where is the accountability with that huge audience, audience gathering power and adding uh, a tool set that uh, both adds value on the content side and an uh, audience experience side, but uh, delivers that accountability. It's so critical in competing for today's um, dollars as they get allocated more to digital because of those accountability and monitoring tools that are available. And then Phil Beswick, who is the president and CEO of the Media Audit, will um, be the um, uh, last person to speak today before we go into our discussion. Uh, Phil has 30 years of experience in media research, sales, and sales management, um, including a stint as a TV research director. So from the perspective he brings on the, on the research side, he's going to show us some more insights and tools that are available to help us go into these um, digital revenue uh, um, streams that are interesting in and of themselves, but they also drive uh, the, kind of the main show revenues, the broadcast revenues, by um, adding value to the uh, broadcast radio inventory because of cross-platform cross lift and showing those kinds of accountability tools that are really critical, again, to compete successfully for the revenue stream. So let me start off with um, providing some uh, baseline data for the, um, for the radio industry as we're seeing it from BIA Kelsey. If I can have that first slide deck. What I'm going to share with you is um, a few data slides, and these are all available. Um, just let me know. Happy to share them with you if they don't come automatically with the conference. Um, showing our forecast and our survey of small businesses and um, small medium businesses and uh, consumers to try to get some insights about what's happening around digital, and we'll focus uh, specifically on radio in, in a number of these um, slides. So radio and other uh, local media opportunities for 2014. Is this a manual slide change or? Next slide, please. Okay. What I'll do is talk um, from kind of a big picture perspective at first. Uh, the people and businesses continue to reorganize around digital media, reorganize and reprioritize. From the consumer perspective, uh, digital is pretty familiar, pretty common. Uh, the interfaces on smartphones, the interfaces on iPods, um, things like Pandora, iHeart, uh, TuneIn, it's becoming more and more familiar to consumers. And of course, advertisers are saying, well, if that's where the consumers are hanging out, we need to hang out there too. So there's a lot of different opportunities around that. So it's consumers are changing their behaviors and attitudes and, and use cases. So are advertisers and so are broadcasters and other media for that matter. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, the, uh, what's on the minds of um, local businesses and consumers, and, and where do we see ad spend going? And this is, again, all from, um, for the most part, uh, different data sets that we produce. Okay, uh, next slide, please. The backstory here is that Kurt and Jennifer have been desperate trying to get the technology working for today. So it's a little bit unpredictable when you push the button, what's going to happen next, who knows? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so a small and medium business advertising. First thing is I'll share some results there. And next slide, please. Okay, so let me just start off to give a little bit of perspective. One of the questions we ask these small and medium businesses is, um, what do you care about? What's, what's important to you as you look ahead for the next 12 months? And this is in the context of a broader online survey that is run by Ipsos, uh, where they have a panel of online small and medium businesses. So to be fair, the context here is they've been asking, uh, they've been answering a lot of questions around digital, media spend, things like that. So it's sort of in their minds a little bit. But still, what do you care about? What are you looking ahead in the, in the context of advertising and promotion over the next 12 months? And first, over half come up and say, Advertising and search marketing, SEM and SEO, uh, I got to figure that out because that is where my business is going to uh, grow. And, and again, these are uh, local businesses. Secondly, print, advertising, and marketing. So as much as they love digital and are learning things like SEO and SEM, print is still what they feel comfortable with, all these businesses. And then third is a tie between social media, um, which is in some cases free, but as I'll show you, they're allocating some spend there on the promotion side. So whatever they're spending in advertising, um, our trend data show that um, it's now skewing towards more spend on a promotion side rather than the paid media side. So from the perspective of these businesses, it's all sort of advertising and promotion. 
but what we call um, promotion, in other words, not paid media spend, is becoming the majority part of their budget as they're trying to execute in digital. And that last thing, 43.4% uh, say analytics, and that translates to accountability. The only reason they care about analytics is because they want to see where their spend's going and what kind of ROI they're getting. So it's um, sort of interesting there. Next slide, please. Okay, so what we did is, he's taking away my distraction. Okay, so um, we do a forecast, and we um, do this on a national level, we do it on an individual market level. Um, and we also uh, do these uh, surveys. This, uh, so I'm gonna show two different kinds of pie charts. This is from the survey of uh, local businesses. We looked at those businesses in our sample that said, yes, they advertise on radio. Okay, where else do you spend your money? And we, we're up to, over three dozen different media categories of different kind of slicing and dicing of it. So here you see radio shows up of people that advertise in radio, they allocate 12.5% of their budget to radio. And then you can see how it splits out um, with some of the other big slices. Um, online is big, um, sponsorships and giveaways, um, uh, an interesting part of the mix. So this is how radio, sh if you're, when you're selling to your current advertisers, here's what the rest of their spend looks like for these businesses with one to 99 employees. Next slide. Okay, so then looking at these businesses, we know they're thinking digital. Got to get more into SEM, SEO, need to get into more social, need to get into more analytics. Um, what, what does that mean in terms of their spend? So they're coming up to about a third of their spend is going to be in digital looking ahead over the next 12 months. So that's kind of a continual growth curve. Okay, next slide. Okay, in the local advertising marketplace, next slide, please. Um, now I'm gonna shift to our forecast data. So for 2013, here's our estimate of what happened in 2013. Um, we forecast out on average that radio comes in fourth in terms of the share of local advertising, about 11.5%. And for these businesses, they love direct mail. So you can see that purple slice there, over a quarter of the spend is in direct mail. Um, TV is also huge, and newspaper, though trending down, is, is still a nice big chunk of it. But that's kind of where radio sits in the mix in 2013. Um, if we, okay, I got my toy back, yes. Overall, um, what's happening with, with digital spend? So we see it going out to 2017, overall coming to about 27.6% um, of total spend in local media. And here, the data I'm showing shift a little bit in perspective. This is our forecast data. So what we're forecasting is spending in local media from any source. And roughly a third of that spend uh, by 2017, it'll be $152 billion or so. About a third of that spend comes from national marketers. And so two thirds is from these um, local and medium businesses. So the, the march towards more digital is progressive, but still not insane. It's not gonna be 100% of the money. The traditional media is still a huge part of the base, the foundation of, um, uh oh, here we go, of um, their paid media spending. Now, if you look at radio, here's our forecast going out to 2018 for radio, um, uh, local uh, spending in local radio companies. This is not radio networks. Uh, here, here's what we see the forecast going out to be: 15.7 billion dollars in traditional over-the-air sales, and just under a billion dollars in digital sale. So whereas a third of um, your client's spend is in digital, um, relative to your revenue base, uh, it's one billion out of almost 16 billion is digital. So sort of a lot of digital opportunities is, is one takeaway here for, for radio. So what's going on in local markets? We have um, the, some of the forecast data I was showing from a national level. We can also drill down when, with our data to look at individual markets. So as an example, looking at a category like automotive in a market like Austin, here's the way it looks. So you can um, compare what radio is doing as part of the overall media spend in market versus national as a comparison or other markets, and then also compare how that looks uh, across the other parts of the pie. So one of the things you can do is see, okay, 2013 versus 2017, how has this been shifting for radio and how is it shifting among the other categories? So that kind of quantifies spend in the market and how that spend's getting uh, not just allocated but also weighted by the different media categories. So you can show up as digital and capture a lot of that growth in digital spending. A couple more slides to finish up and then we'll move on. So consumers, so we do a separate consumer survey. Um, why is all this shift happening to digital and accountability? It's because consumers are behaving differently. We need to be where they are. So consumers now for local shopping, what do they do? 
Um, they do search, they browse uh, websites, but they're increasingly acting. They're completing transactions or they're interacting with a website, downloading directions, making appointment, downloading maps. So when, when businesses see this kind of accountability and they're driving their paid media to get lift out of that kind of engagement, they can get the analytics dashboards to show it works. That is really powerful for businesses. And then um, last thought here is just radio is great. It's so powerful and so wonderful. The way people behave in their shopping behavior in terms of uh, how they search for things, how they uh, inform themselves on, on product purchase, and also what devices they use. We know that they use many devices, but we're getting deeper knowledge about how they use these different devices. Radio has always been great because it's proximate to that last decision about buy. Now, uh, with mobile and tablet, it becomes a multimedia experience, cross-channel experience, and we want to get the credit for radio in that. Don't give it all to the mobile device if the reason they went to the store in the first place was radio, and then that local search on the um, mobile device gets all the credit. We, we need to have ways to get to those analytics. So just to wrap up quickly, um, challenges and opportunities for radio. Um, you will hear about this the rest of the day. A lot of different ways to listen to music and news and information. Um, apps, mobile apps are becoming huge versus mobile websites. You need to have a mobile website, mobile optimized website as a, as a minimum, but really apps are taking a lot of the market. Um, opportunities feed on the street, advertising relationships, radio brands are huge, radio people are creative and they're local, tying together some of these digital trends, a shift towards local, a shift towards analytics and accountability, and a shift towards executing advertising and promotion cross-channel to show overall lift and engagement and brand favorability is kind of where the marketplace is, certainly from the national marketer perspective where they're more um, sophisticated, but increasingly to the local uh, businesses as they get access to better tools for very uh, affordable prices, free to very low cost prices. So um, with that opening um, set of data, let me turn this um, panel over now to Tim and he's gonna come up and share some of uh, the work he's been doing with Cox. Tim? Sure, thank you. So I don't have any slides, but if I can, uh, I just wanted to you know, have a little discussion and if I can iterate this in the same way they did on the call, um, I think we'll be good. But now there's like 100 people sitting in front of me, so it might be a little bit more. And I've had like three Red Bulls this morning, so if I fall off the stage, I apologize. Um, you know, that's a great slide and I think that um, I, would almost, I would almost reverse it and say that our, our challenges there are the opportunities for traditional radio at its core. I mean, relationships are, are something that traditional radio has always done incredibly. Um, I always say, I always joke that everybody throws this native advertising term around, right? And radio to me was the original native advertising with personality endorsements, content integration, um, sponsorships. So as we look toward digital, I'm just going to switch to this because it's probably a little easier. Just there we go. Sorry about that. So as we switch toward, uh, or as we move toward expanding our brands and extending our brands into the digital space, we look at it from this integrated approach. Um, I think that we take a real audience and product standpoint uh, uh, perspective at Cox. And I think it's about looking at I have this slide that I do use sometimes where you have the consumer needs on one side and you have advertiser needs and then you have sort of the middle ground. And we spend a lot of time talking about that middle space, that intersection between what our uh, consumers want and what our advertisers need out of that and how we can use our products, our radio stations over the air, our apps, our mobile sites, our desktop. Um, and integrate, you know, sort of a solution to activate that consumer. So, you know, I think what we're selling here to our advertisers now today is, is solutions to activate that consumer. If you come to one of our top 40 stations, we have a highly active 26-year-old female listener. If you go to one of our rock brands, we have a highly active, you know, certain type of consumer there, a 40-something-year-old male consumer, you know, and I think that's what, what our folks are coming to us looking for. So. A lot of that material is great. It really speaks to what we do. Um, we have an entire revenue operations team uh, led by Rich Reese, who is a radio guy. And that group is spending a lot of time uh, thinking about what other services and what other, other value proposition we can bring to these uh, advertisers so that not only do we have the spots to sell them, not only do we have the banners on the websites and the mobile sites and in the apps to sell them, but we can do reach extension and we can offer search engine optimization, bring all these things into a single program and, um, and come up with something that's really just going to work because we're reaching that consumer everywhere that they interact with us as, as radio station brands. And I think that's really the value. The value of radio and, and the core of radio is not, you know, what platforms are we on? That, that stuff is really important. We spend a lot of time uh, you know, talking about being everywhere they want us to be and, and, and sort of skating to where the puck's going to be in the future. 
Um, but I think the value is in our super brands. We've got incredible heritage on a lot of these radio properties um, with our content, with our personalities, and we can activate that highly engaged core consumer there as long as we're putting the right things in front of them where they're at now and that's on mobile and that's what like you said mobile web and apps and um and then doing reach extension from our station sites onto other sites that these consumers will be using social media i mean for our aes to be able to go out into local businesses and say hey we can offer you sort of the same solutions that we know for the past 20 30 years have worked and they're tried and true but we can also extend that and be on the phone and be on social media and help you to optimize that stuff and um, and optimize the brand in the market with our consumers I think that's um, that's really our approach and um, again integration is is the biggest piece so when we go out and we look to sell our station apps so we at, at CMG we do the um, we do the aggregators we're on iHeart and TuneIn, but we also work with LDR huge huge partner for us and we've developed individual station brand apps and we feel that this is really um, you know the right solution for us uh, we uh, scale our product and our content through the aggregators and then we we, we generate that engagement through the um, through the local apps um, but you know the challenge with local apps is that you can't scale them so it really has to be focused on that integrated approach so when I put together that that program for a client um, I'm looking at what I can bring them into our you know what what kind of integration I can do with with our apps and we're looking more and more at native um, features and those we're looking at interstitials and all the different type of rich media that we can bring in and 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 not interrupt the user experience there because we have a very lean in uh, user experience on our apps versus some of the pure play stuff where you set it and kind of go work out or you set it and you leave it on the table and listen um, we have song voting and we have social interaction and we have different uh, open mic and different features and functionalities that sort of force the listener to be with us in the experience um, so we're working on you know native advertising there to us is how do we integrate some kind of opportunity for a sponsor or an advertiser in and around those experiences without getting in the way like we know traditional stop sets can tend to do over the air um, and then it's taking that same advertiser and taking that same need whatever they're trying to do whether it's drive retail or drive uh, drive audience or drive um, attendance at an event and then look at our other assets on the air can we create a sponsorship around our voting sessions in the app so we'll run a noon takeover on our country station and uh, promote hey go into the app now and vote for what songs you want to hear it's your noon takeover you know can we bring Metro PCS into that and put them in the app and put them on air and put them on the desktop because there is a desktop experience Experience. And we know that in the midday, a huge chunk of our audience is, is working off the desktop platform. Um, those are the questions we ask. And then, you know, can we take reach extension tools like ReQ and use those to extend the campaign and, and get in front of that consumer even more? So um, not to beat the whole integration thing over the head, but, you know, if we are as traditional radio stations, if we look at ourselves, I think in the business of selling impressions, we're never going to get it. We are looking at, um, you know, selling really valuable programs that are going to truly activate that core consumer that, that we have. And, and it's about giving our advertisers access to that person in premium and, and meaningful ways. Um, and then, you know, obviously continuing to develop products that's going to activate that and engage that consumer. Um, and that, that really comes first. And then looking at that middle ground of where we can sort of, I hate to say exploit, but sort of uh, the common ground between what that consumer wants and, and what our advertisers need to get out of them. So that's sort of our approach. I know it's a little bit all over the place, but um, I am a radio guy, so I'm a little, but anyway, um, thank you for your time. And uh, I guess I'll turn it over. Putting the ADHD in radio, but yes. um, <laughs> that was too, so. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, um, that was very interesting, Tim. Thanks very much. So we'll save questions to the end, the discussion for the end. So let me um, invite Martin up next. Hello, there we are. They told me to send a picture and put it on the slide. It looks like I was the only one who did that. There I am. You fell for it. I did, I did. So uh, as the, the last two panelists here have been talking about, there's, there's so many different digital capabilities for you guys to go out there and sell. And I wanted to just highlight one thing. This is uh, one of the solutions that we provide to, to our radio station partners. But we're doing a campaign right now here in Las Vegas 
with a car dealership, Hyundai car dealership. And what it is, is a hyperlocal mobile banner campaign. And what we have done uh, together with a partner is that we set up geofences around all the competing dealerships in Las Vegas. So this is Hyundai, so they're targeting Toyota, uh, uh, Honda, they're, you know, Mitsubishi, what have you. So we set up geofences, fairly tight ones around their specific locations to, uh, to target consumers that are basically entering into these geofences. So uh, you, can, you can set the fence to be as kind of within 100 meters or a mile, two, three miles out, whatever you wanted, but as this consumer enters this visual or in visual boundary, uh, we, are, we are able to serve a very targeted ad to that specific consumer if they're surfing on a mobile website or an application that's location aware, all right? So um, geofences aside, what they're also doing is retargeting, and you guys might be familiar with retargeting online on desktop, you basically cookie and you can kind of follow the behavior or the path of what the consumer does from different websites and retarget them accordingly. On mobile, these cookies are more or less worthless. There's a lot of fingerprinting and a whole bunch of guesswork to kind of figure out who this consumer is. So what we've added to it is location. So for example, you can go back and retarget Jenny here who has visited you know, a specific car dealership in the last 7, 14, 30 days and by doing so, you know that she has an intent to go and purchase a car. So that was also part of this package that we did for, uh, for Hyundai. So, so back to the campaign. We're setting up all these geofences around about 12 locations here in Las Vegas, uh, as well as some other uh, uh, venues that the uh, Hyundai dealership wanted to target, where they think that their purchases might frequent. And through all these banners, the, one, uh, the, the main goal is obviously to drive foot traffic back to the Hyundai dealership. Okay. Uh, you click on this banner, you can get to a landing site. This is what they wanted. They wanted three options. They wanted click to call, click for directions, and click to go to the web uh, or the optimized website that they have for the dealership. All right. We we obviously track uh, the uh, the clicks to this landing sites and also post click kind of what happens if they click on any of these options. Um, and and this is kind of where the uh, the, the meat is that. This advertiser had never bought a single digital campaign from any radio station or TV station in the local market. Uh, they spent about seven grand a month on radio. So they increased that by 45% by adding in this digital component, this hyperlocal uh, um, banner uh, uh, campaign. Uh, the uh, the, the click-through rates that we're seeing is about 3x. This is only a week old. Uh, we're seeing about a 3x uh, response or a uh, increase in click-throughs versus just doing run-of-site campaigns. The uh, last week, they've closed a total of five new dealership, and just on something like this, this is brand new to this radio station. They have closed over 50 grand now in monthly recurring revenues for for uh, for basically hyper-local mobile campaigns. So we keep talking about where's the money. Obviously, pairing a reach medium like radio with something that's this targeted on mobile is something that resonates with the advertiser community and obviously with this they're willing to spend real revenue or real uh, real budgets on so 50 grand closed in the last kind of week and a half mostly from auto they're going after new categories as well but a great start and I think this if you're gonna hang your hat on something uh, we keep talking about SEO SEM you know all these agency solutions that you guys should be out there selling as well I think you can get a little overwhelmed uh, trying to find a couple of things that your salespeople can master is, is, you know, to us what we see a better return in trying to sell the whole enchilada of all these digital opportunities. But just wanted to share that specific Hyundai campaign with you guys and some of the success stories. Great. Thank you very much, Okay, we'll turn now to uh, Bill and tell us uh, some of the things you're seeing in the marketplace. And, and I think you're going to be talking um, on the theme of accountability Hello. also. Great. Thank you. That was great, Martin. Um, I'll start off just a little overview of um, what I think is happening in radio locally. Uh, local radio has obviously had the expectations dramatically rise by digital competitors. They want interactivity, they want attribution, and they want data. And the reality is radio, broadcast radio is still walking in the door pretty much with the same data it has for the last 25 years, which is an invoice, an affidavit, and some spot times. And advertisers local want more than that. They're getting much more than that from Google Automotive Search, Edmunds.com, all the different uh, internet-based and mobile-based 
uh, search engine optimization, everything out there can provide data. What we're doing at Clip is providing data off the broadcast of interactivity at the scale of broadcast, enabling everything that you hear on the radio to be interactive, allowing that listener ultimately to interact with the content. So I'll share with you uh, just some screenshots here. Um, so we start with broadcast radio, 244 million listeners, 25 million AQH, very large listening audience to enable to respond. Imagine that as a revenue impact. And everything that you hear, the music is the low hurdle, obviously. That's the artist information, the artwork, the lyrics, buy the song, thumbs up, thumbs down, share. That's what Shazam's been doing for years, and it's pretty good. Local radio hasn't participated in that themselves because Soundhound, Shazam, and others have done that. But Clip enables that. That's a low hurdle. What is the powerful part for the advertisers and for the radio station is for you to be actually to respond to everything else on the radio and grab that content off the radio, whether it is the promotion, the contest, or the ad, particularly the ad, um, to say, hey, I'm actually interested. I raise my hand, and by using our mobile application that can be embedded into your existing app or, or a generic clip app, you can interact with all that content. And that really ultimately is the key value proposition. These are some screenshots of what the app actually looks like, and that center uh, app example there is Gentle Dental. That's probably our most successful campaign year to date. They were a search-based digital advertiser, did some direct mail um, in the market of Portland, and I'll talk about them specifically. But they came on board and said, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to look at radio again. I'm going to spend $50,000 with Alpha Broadcasting in first quarter because now we can provide attribution, real leads, real leads in the form of email addresses, phone calls, and web visits that are tracked off of our application because someone heard it on the radio and instead of going to Google or instead of going to Yahoo, hit their button and receive that matching mobile content into their phone. So real powerful stuff from that standpoint. A um, couple of case studies that I talked about. This is, uh, again, a small user base to date in Portland, uh, just over 140,000 downloads working with Alpha Broadcasting and Salem Broadcasting. But 24,000 monthly active users of this particular uh, station, we ran the General Dental Campaign, generated 1,100 leads that we took back to that advertiser and said, here's 1,100 email addresses that you can contact that people heard your radio spot, clipped it, it ended up in their mobile device, and they allow them to actually be contacted by General Dental. Radio's never delivered that before. And imagine that at the scale of 244 million broadcast listeners, a 25 million average quarter hour. That's immediately powerful. All we have to do is promote it and get people to do it. A couple others here. This is another local advertiser, $28,000 in new revenue. He abandoned radio two years ago to go to digital and TV because he liked to see himself. And we got him to come back. This is another Alpha Broadcasting account. Spent $28,000 with us in the first quarter. We delivered 222, 224 email addresses that said, I'm interested in liposuction or a facelift or whatever it is. And this advertiser now is looking at using radio again versus, you know, being dormant for the last few years. And then promotional stuff. Radio stations do promotions every day. It's the only medium that delivers 24-7 fresh content all the time. It has to be recreated and keep it fresh. So this is a promotion that we did again with Alpha, with Mount Hood Season Ski Pass. 8,800 or 8,700 people actually clipped when they heard the promotion. Um, 3,100 3, of them opened that particular clip, 37% open rate. If you know about digital, that's unbelievably high. If you get 1%, usually you're screaming your head off if you're Google or you're, or you're Yahoo. Um, and 800 people of the 3,100 who clipped were interested because they heard the spot, said, hey, what? Contact me. I'm interested in a ski pass. If I don't win, contact me. We passed that back to the mountain. They went crazy. And then uh, just a couple others here. This is a local uh, Halloween haunted house, right? Haunted house, local advertiser comes in, spends you know, $10,000 $10, across the marketplace. They spent with Alpha. We clip enabled their campaign. We delivered 2,000 coupons, mobile coupons that were downloaded off of hearing it on the broadcast and ultimately showing up and saving $5, which generated $11,000 in ticket sales for them. And they spent about $1,500 with us of the, of the total $10,000 budget. So these are all examples just of how local radio, the scale of broadcast, can be enabled to ultimately deliver the data, the interactivity, and the attribution that we need to compete with digital media. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, Phil, why don't you um, talk to us about some of the things you're working on? Good morning. 
couple of realities that we deal with in the research business at the media audit. Number one, advertisers are simply looking for qualified consumers. And number two, the advertising media knows, needs to know their media and they need to be able to match that strength to what it is the advertiser is looking for. Reality number two is most consumers live in a local market and most consumers purchase most of their products in that local market. And reality three, radio's websites are highly competitive in that local marketplace when you take a look at them against TV or newspaper, yet if you take a look at what Rick talks about in terms of the share of dollars that go into the digital in the radio side of things, it's an awful lot less. And the question becomes, what is radio in the web? Is it terrestrial broadcast radio combined with its websites? Or is it Pandora, iHeart, and those others combined? Well, let's take a look at this. And I randomly picked a couple of markets. One, Vegas, because we're here in Vegas, and the other, Atlanta, because Tim happens to be out of Atlanta. On the left-hand side, we're taking a look at what does newspaper and TV websites on the left and on the right, how do they look in terms of their share of people in terms of the percent who are visiting the websites for $100,000 household income? This is in Atlanta. When we then on the right hand side go in and mix up and pull in the Tandors and the iHearts with the regular radio websites, and you can see here radio is very, very competitive in terms of the strength it has against those other local media websites like newspaper which has high income profile. Television and radio are very, very close, yet television and newspapers are getting the lion's share of those dollars. Take a look at Vegas. Same layout of the slide. On the left hand side though, we're taking a look here at the radio and about 42 percent of the people who are going to radio websites are in that upper income categorization. Television, newspapers, they trail. Add in the Pandoras and the uh, iHearts of this world and you can still see that radio is very, very strong compared to those that are taking more money out of the marketplace. Move into a product category, automotive, now focusing in on Atlanta on the left hand side you can see radio very very strong leading the other two that are taking more money out of the marketplace add in the Pandora iHeart web radio to the uh, radio webs and you can see here radio still is very very strong and one of the key categories that we need to go after moving over to Vegas you can see the same kind of story coming in for those people planning on purchasing a vehicle radio very very strong throw in Pandora iHeart web radio into the radio mix and you see another strong one so the message that we bring to you is that radio has a very strong position but it's a weak spot that it's got right now and it's got a very good position in the marketplace because the market is local advertisers are looking to create brand involvement in the local marketplace and radio and its websites deliver that Thank you. Great. Thank you, Phil. Okay, let me um, start off with a few questions. And, and um, Tim, let me start with you. And, and this, uh, forgive me, but it's a little bit personal. I'm just kind of curious. So radio, we're, we're talking about broadcast radio. We're talking about pure plays. We're talking about digital and accountability and interactive and everything. Um, so I think it's possible you're the youngest demo up on the panel here. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you started off, you're saying 15 or 16, not only did you listen to audio on the internet, but I mean, you're motivated to start your own sort of pirate radio station. So, I mean, you're, you're the millennial, you're the, the digital guy, you're the audio guy. Um, if you look at radio's audience, uh, and Phil was just showing some of the kind of audience statistics there, um, you know, that, that, that whole young cohort has become more challenging for broadcast radio to reach, and yet somehow you were motivated to devote your life um, to, you know, uh, in substantial part, the broadcast radio part of the whole um, media mix. Um, how'd you get there? And, and what's your secret so we can bottle it and get the rest of the young people there too? <laughs> um, well, I, look, I, I grew up in New York. I grew up listening to Z100, the biggest top 40 radio station in the world, maybe. And um, 
I would listen to Z100 on the internet, even though I lived in the local market. So I think that's telling. But then out of uh, that, you know, uh, out of the engagement that I, I that that happened with me listening to Z100, just figuring out that, you know, I liked radio and that I loved this and I wanted to be Elvis Duran and I wanted to be, you know, be that guy, right? Um, you know, then I started to discover radio stations in other cities that I could listen to over the internet, right? And then the whole um, SAG after thing happened and it all went away for a while and I couldn't listen to anything. But, you know, I, I got into internet radio really because, you know, I was, I was 15, 16 and sitting in my mom's basement listening to Z100 wanting to do it and I couldn't do it yet because I couldn't walk into uh, AM, FM at the time or whatever and, and say, hey, give me a job. I'm 15. I need to be on the radio, right? So I just went out like most people, you know, the pirate folks have, had done, and instead of building a transmitter, I used uh, Shoutcast, or whatever it was at the time, you know, Live 365, and, um, and that's sort of the cool, uh, the neat thing about doing this is, like, Daniel Anstan Day from LDR, LDR and I will, like, run into people, and, and we'll just, probably a lot of people in this room, like, we've crossed path, paths with, and everybody's going, oh, he was 15 at the time, so, um, you know, I think that radio, what we do at, at, at traditional radio, whatever you want to call us, it's not radio. So radio is a way of transmitting waves through the air, right? Radio is a platform, and somehow we have gotten defined as radio, right? Well, great, cool, we're radio, but we're really content, we're event, we're brands. You know, and I think we need to really shift that thinking of, of what we are, because yes, we're radio, but what is that exactly? There's, it's blurred lines. In, in every piece of research you see, radio is Pandora, and radio is Spotify, and radio is FM, and you know, like, what is it? What we do is really, really great content, um, user engagement, um, and, and digital. digitally now we can expand extend all that stuff into every single device that, you know, our consumer is using. But what it comes back to and what it was for me that got me into radio and got me listening to radio was that brand, Z100, the larger than life thing that put on this big concert and had this big morning show and was out there and like, that's what it was about for me. And whether I'm listening to it on a phone or on a, on a, a computer or an actual transistor radio didn't really, didn't really matter and I, I still think it, it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, to me, that's kind of the reality out there. I think Phil showing that with some of his data in terms of radio's ability to show up even against some of the pure play sites when you add it into the mix. So, I mean, I think that is where the kind of hearts and minds of the audience um, are. And it's a matter of um, both pure plays and, and broadcast radio uh, figuring out how to get access to that and, and engage those consumers and extend that into the advertising experience as well. Um, Bill, I want to ask you a question. Sure. Um, the, the, um, so we're talking about uh, accountability and engagement and mm -hmm. that kind of um, halo effect of what, th what broadcast radio is able to do, but then execute in, in digital and show some accountability. Mm -hmm. So on the theme of accountability, I mean, sometimes it comes up, um, uh, how, how do we sell that? Is, is this uh, uh, performance-based advertising? Is that something people are playing with? So you, one of your examples, I think. I think you start with the native assets of the broadcast, and that is at 24-7, 365, yeah. you're driving awareness for when need meets awareness. But now radio can prove that we're helping need meet awareness through providing some type of analytics off of the broadcast. And I think that's, that's still the fundamental nat native offer of radio. And the native element is obviously the sound. So the way to do that by connecting digital capabilities to the broadcast sound, I think, is, is the way to go. I'll tell you, uh, startups are always granular. I go on a lot of local sales calls with the Alpha team and the Salem team. And when you go into an automotive dealer today, uh, you walk in and the guy will tell me, Three years ago, I had one guy in the back doing automotive search and digital marketing. Now I have six, right? So it tells you that attribution and accountability is very important to them. So I think it comes down to the native elements and tying new capabilities to the native elements. Right, absolutely. So Martin, for, for mobile, um, so critical and you know, one of radio's value propositions is it's, it may be the last thing you listen to before you make that final purchase. But with, with mobile as a channel, uh, interacting with radio, I mean, that really amplifies that value proposition. And doing that geofencing is, is, is pretty critical. Um, how do you see that going forward? Is that going to be, um, uh, uh, in terms of the value mix between what the mobile channel has to, to radio, is, do you need selling those together? Is it a better proposition than trying to sell mobile alone, uh, the geofencing capabilities of mobile alone? How, how does that kind of um, cross-channel lift or, or cross-channel multiplier happen? You're working. There you go. Swap it up. What we're seeing on on the geofencing side is actually, and let's let's use this group here in Vegas as an example. They are actually not even talking about radio when they're when they're out pitching to many of these clients anymore. They're talking about their digital capabilities 
And, and this is a group that have licensed one of these uh, uh, digital agency tools. Basically, you can do SEO, you can do SEM, you can do you know, social media management and everything else. But uh, the salespeople are having a tough time because there's so many choices. And, and back to your example, a lot of the clients have already done this for many, many years. And they're sure a whole lot more educated about how to do it than vast majority of the sales reps walking in. So what they have done here in this local market is kind of like, okay, really try and learn this um, hyper-local banner opportunity, which if you look at the banner opportunity for radio and, and the, the you know, cross industries as well, it's, it's where the huge amount of the money is spent, but it's moving more and more to the more hyper-local, right? So what we're seeing is that they're going out there pitching this uh, to clients that are already spending money on radio, but this is in, you know, in addition. This is something new. So yes, you're spending money on our stations, getting the reach, it's cost effective, you've done it for many, many years. However, now they're tapping into completely new budget, and the example we used was 45% in new revenues. Uh, this client actually re-upped for next year, and now it's more than 100% in new revenues for that specific client. But uh, we're seeing them going out there pitching this, not coupled with radio, more as a, more as a standalone uh, for, for stations that are already spending on radio and stations that are not even, that have never even been on radio. And do you, do you see this as radio sellers selling this as a digital only offer or is it a... Um there is. So this group does not have digital sellers locally. They have a regional setup with regional sellers. I think there are four or five of them. But, uh, you know, that person was not in the marketplace going out on this call. I actually went on the call on Friday with them. And, uh, and it really resonates with the buyer. They're truly looking for that person that it's in close proximity, whatever that proximity might be that they want, and uh, on the retargeting, somebody that's really been to dealerships over the last you know, few days, week, two weeks, what have you, to retarget to them to get them to come to the dealership. And if you track the post-click, how many people actually call, go to the websites, or even click for direction, it's, it's substantial. Gotcha. I think you have time probably for one more question. So Phil, let me ask you this. The data you were showing were, were interesting, kind of showing radio kind of against its organic um, traditional uh, competitors, but then when you add in uh, some of the pure plays, it was interesting to see just in, in the mix between Atlanta and Las Vegas um, how radio still fared fairly well, but there was a big jump. Um, um, I think it was in the um, Vegas market between radio versus uh, TV newspaper sites. Uh, then when you add in the mix, it, it, it hold its own, but still drops significantly. I just want to point out that CMG owns the TV and newspaper in Atlanta, so we're, you know, that's why. Bad joke, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, I mean, so we saw the data, but what, um, what insights or actions can come from that from the radio perspective? So if we see, you know, in a market, um, at, I'm at a radio um, group and I'm selling, and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're losing website traffic, which we, we see eventually translates into ad revenue. What can we do about that? I mean, so first of all, you need to know it. And secondly, um, what, what kind of insights to organize around that do you, do you have to offer? I'm not sure I'm qualified to, uh, to answer that question in terms of what can we do about it. But what I was trying to point out is, as a research company, we, we are not a radio company. We're not a digital company. We're a consumer-centric company. And I think an awful lot of people out there, if you could talk to the consumer, they don't care whether they're getting it from the radio website or whether they're getting it from Pandora or it's streaming. And so all I was trying to say to everybody, and everybody comes along and says, well, Pandora or is bad or TuneIn or whatever the heck it is, I'm going, forget about it. You know, as we say in New York, you really got to focus on the consumer and say, where are they coming from? And radio websites are very strong, and when you meld in the, uh, the Pandora, iHeart, TuneIn's and so forth, they're equally as strong, and they have a very strong position to compete against those people who are cleaning our clocks, and that's the newspapers and the TV stations on their webs. Great, thank you, Phil. Okay, well, let me, uh, we're at our time, so please join me in thanking Tim, Phil, Martin, and Bill.